Praise the Lord. We bring you greetings from Faith Temple Lighthouse, where our pastor is District Elder Joseph Long, 7000 Bennett Street. We truly thank God for his grace and for his mercy. Uh, because had it not been for the goodness of the Lord, I would not be here today. I don't know how you got here. I can't answer for you, but I know it's God that allowed me to be here. If he decides to take my breath, then I no longer exist. I no longer am here. But God brought me here. God allowed us to be here today for his glory. Amen. Without, without God, you would not be here. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God ordered you here. You, you may have decided to come here, but God put it on your heart to be here. So I thank God. I thank God for his grace and for his mercy uh, for all that, that he has done and all that he is, he is going to do. So, um, now, I don't know if, and I'm not trying to make this political, but did y'all see the law that got passed by the Democrats? about the equality of marriage huh this is coming back to Sodom and Gomorrah huh the time we are in now is Sodom and Gomorrah you, you can look at it any kind of way you want but that that's where it's that's where it's going and I'm not I'm not saying anything against anybody's uh, you know affiliation of what they believe in but the truth is the truth that's where it's going that's that's where it's headed and we got to be ready we got to be ready we got we got to stand up because it's coming huh you got to put on the whole armor of God and get ready to stand against the wiles and the wickedness and the devilishness that's about to come our way. Again, I'm not putting anything on Biden or anybody. They're just being used. Every, every, every person that gets in that leadership role is, is appointed by God. And their agenda, whether they have one or not, is to follow God's plan to, to put us back to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Everything, everything they do, no matter what they say, no matter what good, no matter what bad, whatever comes out of it, is leading back to that. So, so be prepared. Be on your knees, saints of God. Be on your knees. Because if we're if we're, we're not on our knees, then we're not ready. If if you're not spending time on your knees, you are not going to be ready. Now I'm talking to myself. I can't talk to them. The, the first, the word got to come to me. So this is for me. If y'all want to receive it, then you can say amen. But but if I don't get on my knees then I am not prepared to deal with what changes are coming down the road. If you are not on, if you do not fall on your face, I don't care if it's in a bull rush. I don't care if you're laying flat. I don't care if you're kneeling, but you better start praying. Because change is coming. Change is coming, and it is not for the good. It is not for the good. It is not to promote godliness. We have to get ready. Not, not, not getting ready. Huh? Like the, like the unwise virgins. Huh? They trying to get ready. Don't, don't wait. You, you need to get ready. If you ain't been baptized, there's the pool. You need to start getting ready. If, if, if we need to clear out the altar, then we, let's, let's clear it out and let's get ready. This is serious. When they're making changes like that, this is moving us back. You, you got to read the word of God. That's the second thing. You, you, you got to read something. I don't care if, 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 if it's in Jesus and God said, let there be, and there was. But every day you got to put some of this word in your soul because it's got to anchor you and it's got to keep you because more things are going to rise up against the body of Christ here in the future and if you're not ready 
you'll get caught up. 12th chapter of Romans. Well, I thank God for my family. I thank God for the church family. I thank God for God's patience with me. Maybe I don't need patience, huh? <laughs> huh? We, we ain't got no stubborn folk in here, huh? <laughs> we, we, we ain't got no, no detour saints in here, huh? When God tell you to go left, you go right. We ain't, we ain't got, anybody ever did that? I, I'll talk to myself. <laughs> I try to be as transparent as possible. Because all have sinned, huh? And fallen short of the glory of God. I fall, I fall short every day. Amen. 12th chapter, verse 1. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you, praise you, magnify your name. Use these lips of clay to do thy will, thy way, that you get the glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I beseech thee, brethren, verse 1, that by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. You have to make a change in the way that you present yourself. Huh? You just can't come to God any way you want to. Now, don't give me, I'm not twisting. Don't, don't, I, he says, come as you are. I understand that. I'm talking to the household of faith. We just can't give God junk. It's like David, like we talked about in Sunday school. He didn't, he, he didn't want God to be in a tent anymore. He looked around. Have you looked around and seen how blessed you are? Have you really looked and seen that you have a stable home in your life, that you have things around you that, that support you on a daily basis, that, that, that you have things that have you, have you ever gone to a closet and it been empty before or a refrigerator and there's no food or you open it and it's got dry spoiled milk in it because no one's gone shopping? Have you ever lived like that? See, if you can go to the and get your oodles and noodles out the closet like my kids and there's an abundance of it, and they can make two packs every day. Not one, two. That's the abundance of God that has provided things for them. Because I remember going to the closet and there'd be nothing there. Huh? Yeah, I was one of those kids that, uh, Sister Hands, you see that may come to school, didn't, didn't eat last night. Didn't have a good sleep last night. Some of y'all sleep on certain mattresses, and, and, and God lets you be comforted through the night. Hallelujah. I thank God for my bed. I got a heated pad on my bed, cut my whole bed. Huh? Growing up, I didn't have all that. I was lucky to share a bed with rats and roaches that lived in the house with me. Y'all don't hear me. Huh? They trying to kick me out. Because they got there before I did. You don't know how good you got. Hmm? Present yourself. Come like God blessed you last night. That God made a way for you. That God, you, you don't even know how much God is protecting you. Somebody probably tried to kill you yesterday, last week. Somebody probably tried to get rid of you. Hallelujah. Get you off your jaw. Somebody tried to do something to you that was conniving. But God blocked it. Present yourself uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a body, uh, a sacrifice. Present yourself because God wants you to represent him. Verse 2 says, be not conformed. Let me tell you this. You ain't got to change for nobody. Especially this world. This world wants you to do things its way. And it has a lot of avenues to entice you to do it that way. Huh? It has a lot of, a lot of ways and, and things that, that it uses to, to manipulate the situation, to, to make you look at something a certain way. So you make a decision to go with what the world is telling you. But it says, be not conformed to this world. 
Saints of God, this is not our home. We are pilgrims passing through. Don't let the things that come up against you come in your mind. Enter your eyes and say that, hallelujah, I have to do it the world's way. No, I want to do it God's way because God said to present myself a certain way to him. He's the one that's leading me. He's the one that's guiding me. He's the one that's teaching me. So I want to make sure that in this world, my life is not conformed to the world's ways. Break it down for my, my kids. They get mad at me when I check where they're going. Well, Dad, they don't do it that, that way this day. I want to talk to the parent before you go over somebody's house. No, oh, Dad, that's not how they do it. We just meet. No, that, that's how Dad does it. I'm not conforming because they don't do it. I sure did, man. My kids called the father of the boys. house. live right up the street. Been knowing the brother since we was in Penn Hills High School. I don't care. Hey, bro. Can my kids come up here at 11 o'clock at night? Is there really a sleepover? Yes, yeah, my son's birthday. They welcome up, Brother Sean. Okay, now they can go. But there would be no release unless I speak. I'm not conforming because you say it's okay, and that's the way they do it. And it's no, 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 no. Some things you just can't conform to. They said, Dad, we'll be back by 7 o'clock. I was downstairs studying by 7.01. They ain't came through the door yet. They was about to get it. They came in 7.16. See, because then, then they wouldn't go to no sleepovers. See, now, now, now I, I said, I'm not conforming. And they told their friends or somehow that, 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 that now they still got to go to church after being up all night or late. Yes, they do. I'm not conforming. They still got to come to the house of God. Now, yeah, they slept during Sunday school. I gave them that. But I told them you better be up for service. No, no, no. You can't conform to what the world says. And that's going to make you even a bigger minority because you're going to be standing on stuff that people say, well, they don't do it that way. That's the way I do it. They call me 5-0 because I'm always policing stuff. You doggone right. Now, what's the real words, guys? I'm not 5 What y'all call me? Federal? 12? What you call me? Yeah, 12, whatever it is. I don't care. You can make it 13. I told him, I'm responsible for you until you become a man. The Bible says train up a child. Now, at 18, 19, and you want to do your thing, that's your business. I'm teaching you now. What you do with it, that's your choice. My son said he want to get an ear pierced. Not on my watch. When you get 18, you do your thing. I ain't paying for it. I ain't signing for it. I don't believe in it. They don't want to get a tattoo. No, you're not. Not on my watch. I'm not conforming to that. I'm not doing that. You get 18, you do your thing. But up to that point, I got to present myself and my family to God. And there has to be a certain reputation that I try to take to God. Oh, no, I'm not perfect. I failed, I failed yesterday. And you know what? If I keep living, I'm going to fail again. But as long as I got a repentive heart inside of me, I repent before God to let him know, Lord God, I failed you. Sure did. Got to myself and separated. And God beat me up. Amen. Yes, he did. Maybe, maybe I don't get beaten by God. <laughs> I stay in the punishment corner. <laughs> but I'm striving. See, that's like everybody here. You're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes, saints of God, young people, people of God. That The world is going to trip you up. But you cannot conform to what the world is trying to give you. But you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How you thought yesterday, you cannot think like that today. If you learn something today, apply it, make it applicable. Don't think like you did yesterday. You have to pull out your eraser and erase that. You got to change your mind in the way that you think. I 
I believe it's 2 Corinthians says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. See, when you get born again, when you get baptized, and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, that automatically puts a treasure inside this earthen vessel. That puts a treasure. That means you have something to draw from. Now, it's for the glory of God, but he put it there so that you have something to draw from. And you got to renew that. So you just can't get saved 20 years ago and just be saved. There has to be a walk. There has to be a striving. There has to be a sanctification development in my life as I push closer to God. Because the Word of God says be separated. Huh? And come out from among them. Huh? You, you, you can't dance the same dance you did. I watched this one bishop on, on YouTube. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't comment. But half the time he's partying, and the other half the time he's preaching. I can't remember his name. But I'm like, what are you? What are you? You, 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 you can't be, it's, it's, like, it's like a burger joint in, in, in California. It's called In-N-Out Burger. You can't be in and out in the house of God. Huh? You've been chosen for a purpose. Huh? You have a bigger calling. Sister Bridget has a bigger calling than a master's degree. Man, I'm about education. But Lord Jesus, the master's degree is not going to do anything for her what God's calling is going to do for her. Saul said that. Saul said, I give away all that degree that I got from, from an education for God to bless my ministry. Every soul in here has a ministry. I'm going to say it again. Every soul in here has a ministry. Huh? My ministry is not your ministry. Hmm? Your ministry is not my ministry. I don't want yours because I don't want to get or go through what you had to go through to get there. And you don't need mine. But you, you, you're important to God. That's why, that's why he's talking about this, that the perfect will of God is how you present yourself. Let me just put on a natural thing again. My one son brought his clothes in, and he said, I said, oh, that needs iron. He said, well, maybe just in your eyes, yep, and I'm going to steam it so we knock out those wrinkles because you ain't going to church like that with me. <laughs> you are not going to wrinkle. Present yourself. Huh? Oh, come on. Now, when you went to the club, you got presented. You might have stayed in that mirror all day long. Huh? Everything had to be on point. They don't let nothing be out of sorts. And d don't walk too close to you. <laughs> huh? Don't, don't get too close. Now you want to drag into the house of God. No, we give God our best. We give the world nothing. You're better than where you at right now. You haven't even fulfilled your destiny. God got more for you. Hmm? God has more for you to do. So it says, be renewed in your mind that you may prove that which is good. Uh -huh. You got to prove God is good. To, huh? Prove. A proof means that you challenge it. You research it. And then you verify. I got any verifier that God is good? Got to see a show of hands that God, had, was God good to you yesterday? Did God provide food for you yesterday? Did your light stay on yesterday? Did God open up a door that you weren't even expecting yesterday? Did God make a way out of no way yesterday that you weren't expecting? Did God do things, hallelujah, that man to you, that man said, she won't do it, he won't do it, can't get through it, won't overcome it, God, hallelujah, because God made a way out of no way. Present your body a living sacrifice. 
That's your reasonable service. I lost my, my sister, Sister McDonald. She would know what I would say. Because she would say, Brother Walthar, you keep driving up the area, you keep doing this. And I would turn to her and say, that's my reasonable service. I ain't doing nothing special. I'm not doing nothing that, that God hasn't called me to do. Colossians, Colossians, the third chapter. We're going we're gonna to end. This is a thin page, so I gotta I can't find it. It makes it diff not it makes I can't find it. But it's so thin. I I press down it skips ten pages, goes to a whole nother book. All right, third chapter. Verse one it says, If you therefore be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections what? On things above, not on things of this earth. This is how you transform. This is how you prevent conforming. Your affections have to be placed on heaven, have to be placed on spiritual things, have to be placed on things that are not of the earth. Oh, no, no, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The word of God in the Old Testament said, I desire to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God still got blessings for you. Huh? God, God still has blessings for you. Huh? God is still blessing me. Even in my shortcut. Oh, hallelujah. Even in my faults. My God, I'm glad God ain't like people. <laughs> Y'all man threw me away a long time ago. Say that filthy rag. <laughs> but thank God, God gets down when I'm in my field. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Huh? He don't kick me when I'm down. He gets down there with me. Now, I can look for a scolding later, but at the time when he comes, he's going to come in with love and kindness. Some of the saints in the church are like the Good Samaritan story. We cross on the other side. Oh, not touching, you ain't getting near him or her. She sinned. Oh, my God. He said, oh, look, oh, my God. But if your affection is on things above, you won't. See, that's part of the world. The world judges. They judge by status, by money, by fame, by looks. God, I'm glad God don't look on the outside. Huh? Because he told Nathan, if I, I got the right name, don't, don't, look, don't look on his appearance. God, God ain't worried about what you look like. Huh? But if you've been called and chosen, he's looking at what your heart is. God wasn't just a carpenter, but he was a heart surgeon. So he not to fix broken hearts, too. He know how to fix things that are wrong. He know how to fix because your heart makes you do things that this, that, that 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 covers or, or or overcompensates for what the spirit is trying to do. That's why some of the people in the church walk around and don't speak to one another because somebody that hurt them. But God ain't never hurt you, huh? Has God hurt anybody in here, huh? So if I set my affections on things above and not on what's going on with the earth, I'll be blessed. I'm about to finish. Now, I want you to dress for success, and I've taught this before, but I'm just coming a little different. Uh, verse, we're going to drop down to verse 10. Because the ones before that talk about all, well, let, let, me, let, me, no, let me go to 8. But be you not put off, put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. This is verses 8 9 in Colossians. See, there are things that you got to put off. Amen. I do. Amen. You do. That's why it's there. This is to the church. But they want you to put on a new man. Oh, my God. Ain't everybody bought a new vehicle here before? Huh? My God. I got excited about my new car. You should get excited about your new man. Huh? You should get excited about the new man. 
Verse 10 said, and have put on a new man, which is renewed, renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. You should renew your knowledge every day of God. It ain't wrong to be repetitive in reading the same scripture over and over again. You ever read a scripture and you read it and it didn't have that big of an effect, but then you went through something, you came back to that scripture and it blessed you? That's why you renew your knowledge. That's, that's why you stay on top of the scripture. That's why you stay on top of the word. That's why you drill down into it. So put on a new man. There's neither Greek nor Jew. Ain't no race in here. There's just one body. Okay? That's verse 11. That's just summarizing up. Put there, therefore, an elect, holy, and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. These are things that in Romans, the 12th chapter, it says, be renewed. The, this would be the scripture I would go to. What do I have to renew so I can be present my body a living sacrifice? What do I need to do to renew? I got to be more kind. I got to have mercy. I got to have long suffering. Now, verse 13 is a joint effort for bearing one another and forgiving one another. If I'm renewing myself, then I got to forgive you. That's what, is that what it say? Ain't my word. Didn't write it. Just reading it. Talk to God about it if you don't like it. It says forgiving one another. If you have a problem with each other, you got to forgive. Huh? You got to forgive. It says if any man have a quarrel against any, we, we shouldn't be quarreling in the church. Huh? You got to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Press means there has to be change. You can't press if you carry the same dead stuff with you every day. It won't allow you to press. It'll weigh you down. So when you're pressing, you're changing. When you're changing, you're pressing. When you're changing and pressing, that means you're separating and you're leaving. You've got to be able to change and press and believe that whatever God has in store for you, he's going to bring it to pass. But we can't be quarreling with one another. Praise can't go up if we're fighting. If I'm fighting with you, praise ain't going up. See, then my affection is not on things above. It's on things right here. My mindset is wrong now. So let this mind be in you, which is... He had an ascending... Mindset. Huh? Do you have an ascending mindset? Do you want to make heaven your home? Do you have an ascending mindset that you want God to use you in a mighty way here? Huh? Do you have an ascending mindset? Let me interject this. I'm a Coach Prime fan. I wasn't years ago. People got on him because he left Jackson State. But if you follow him and you listen, his mind is ascending in a sense that he wants to take other black minorities to a power five school where most of them won't get a chance. And he wants them to be to ride on him to get to those elevations. See, you have to be willing to go forward. You have to be willing to take a chance. You have to be willing to walk through the door that God is opening for you and not be judgmental about how it opened, but that God opened it. Because God said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. He said, I'll prepare a table in the presence. Oh, my God. You got a table spread, but because some of you don't like spread it, you ain't taking from it. Think about that for me. That's not conforming. That's taking what God gave them to give to you, to bless you, to open up a door for you, to make a way for you. But if we're quarreling over those things, there is no ascension. There is no spiritual ascension thinking about God. How do you think about yourself? See, I say that because I used to think about myself. I was nothing but a junkie son because my mother was an addict. See, and I knew how to melt down here when it shoot it up before I knew my times tables in school. Cause I used to give her her medicine, so I thought, in middle school. So for years, I took that with me that I'm nothing but a junkie son. Me thinking of myself 
was very low. And that's why you got to renew in your mind how you think. Just because you are where you are doesn't mean that's where you're planted. Oh, hallelujah. Let me say it again. Just because you are where you are doesn't mean you're planted. God want to move you somewhere now. But your ascension of thinking, your, your level of thinking, your mindset is not on heavenly things or upward things. Deuteronomy, I think it is, where he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. It's time to get up from the bottom. Hallelujah. It's time to raise up from where God, where you thought you were. It's time to raise up, hallelujah, from, from meagerness and, and meekness. It's time to raise up and go higher in God. It's time to climb. Your ascension has to start now by the renewing of your mind and how you think and see God, how you see yourself in God. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Drop the quarrels. Drop the backbiting. Drop the things that are not ascending. It's time for you to climb. It's time for you. You don't need a degree. You don't need a doctor. You don't need this. You don't need that. All you need is Jesus. Hallelujah. If I got Jesus, then that's enough. Hallelujah. Because he is my God. He is my way maker. He is my provider. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright morning star. Everything that I need, he is. And I am what? Complete. Well, Y'all don't hear me. I am complete in him. A husband can't make you complete. A wife can't make you complete. But God will make you complete. Well, can I be real and frank? A booty call can't make you complete. I See, I'm raw with mine. If you don't speak it, they don't hear it. Now, let me speak to the brothers. Brothers? The number of girls don't make you more of a man than it would if you had none. That ain't got nothing to do with your manhood. God made you a man. Your lady count ain't making you nothing. Hallelujah. Focus on what we can do for the Lord. So it says here, put on a new man. Stop quarreling against one another. If even Christ forgave you, also, also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bound of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule richly, rule in your hearts, to that which you also are called in one body. And be ye what? Thankful. If you're thankful, you'll, you allow yourself to be conformed. Or transformed if you're thankful if you're quarreling you're not going to accept the change you're going to fight the change you're going to buck the change see that's what Saul did don't have a Saul experience where God had to basically come down and say I'm going to knock you the heck out because you can't fight me saints of God people of God stop fighting God don't fight God If you knew you were on a winning team, you wouldn't fight. If you understand that God already won. Huh? If you knew that you were more than a conqueror. Oh, my God. If you knew you were more than a conqueror. I'm trying to close. But if you knew you were more than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror. But more than. Now, I'm not really sure what more than is. If I put in my own term in language, I would say that I had many conquers, that I have conquered. So I'm more than a conqueror. God will let you conquer the things that you don't think you can. But you got to be ready to change. Church, get ready to transform. Don't conform because it's easy. Don't give in to it. Because it feels good. Don't give in to it. Because they said it was right. 
Don't conform, but transform. Change how you see God. Keep looking up to God. One of my favorite scriptures, I look up to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. There's a song that goes with my help. I ain't singing it though. My help cometh from the Lord. Don't conform. Transform. By renewing. By putting on that new man. It can't stay in the closet forever. Huh? You got to go for change. You got to go for growth. You got to go for spiritual edification. So again, I encourage you, if you haven't been baptized, the water's there. That's transforming. The altar's here. The Holy Ghost. You ain't got to come to the altar. I think we had one speaking tongues coming out the water. You can come out, you can come out the water, you can be a total transformed person. Saints of God, don't let the world's slick, sly system make you conform to their ways. But transform by the renewing of your mind. Transform. Get, get in the right mind. Ascend to peace, ascend to joy. A sin to loving kindness, a sin to patience. And watch God bless you and anoint you for change. Because the world is changing, saints. The world is changing. And either you're going to conform or transform. Either you're going to conform or transform. So I encourage you to get on your knees, not popcorn knees. Get in your word. Pick a scripture a day. It ain't, you ain't got to read a whole book. Meditate on one scripture. That's enough to feed you all day. Huh? One scripture can feed you all day. And be applicable in that day if God led you to it. Even if he didn't, then you open it up and, and you read it. That'll feed you all day. I used to like buffets when I was younger. I could eat all I want. I was mad when Ponderosa closed down. <laughs> I love those wings. <laughs> See, well, I can eat all day. I can eat all day on one word. One word I can eat on. I'm even learning to do that in my fasting. I'm closing. Because sometimes I cheat my fasting. I ain't nothing but cheating myself and cheating God. But now, now I learn to read my word and it feeds me what my body or my flesh tries to tell me I need. See, I would conform to my body. See, but now I'm trying to transform. Oh, my stomach's rumbling? Where's that scripture I read earlier this morning? And I start feeding on that. And that takes away my mind off of what I'm missing. Or what I, see, the world want to make you think you miss something. Want to stir up your hunger for something in the world. But I encourage you to separate. Don't conform. Transform. And put on a new man. In Jesus' name.